This is the story of Golf Alpha Sierra Hotel Golf. On the 22nd of October 1963, a BAC 111 was to take off from Whistley Aerodrome. Now, this wasn't a commercial flight. In fact, at that point, the BAC 111 hadn't even entered service yet. This was a test flight of the brand new airplane. This was the 111's 53rd test flight, and on that day, they were planning on testing the stall characteristics of the BAC 111 with varying centers of gravity. The plane was piloted by Lieutenant Commander Mike Lithgow, and the plane had seven occupants. At 10.17 a.m., the plane took off from Whistley. They had five stall tests to carry out, and after takeoff, they turned to the west, and the plane started to climb to 17,000 feet as Whistley radar tracked the plane. The crew worked fast. By 10.35 a.m., the crew had already completed four stall tests with the gear and flaps up. At 17,000 feet, the pilots extended the flaps to 8 degrees for the next test. Two minutes after last contact with ATC, the pilots started to put the plane into a stall. A familiar buffeting sensation came over the airplane as the stall got closer and closer. But that was expected. In any other flight, this would have been cause for concern. But this was a test flight and thus was normal. Over the English countryside, the BAC 111 dropped as the stall took hold. Soon, it was time for them to get out of the stall. The elevators responded initially, but to the pilot's horror, the elevators stopped responding. They needed to drop the nose of the jet to get out of the stall. But that wasn't happening. The plane was still in the stall as it dropped from the sky. The pilots were desperate. They were trying everything. As they were troubleshooting, the plane banked from the right to the left. The pilots pushed the engines to max power in an attempt to power out of the stall. But that just pushed the nose of the plane up, making the stall even worse. The nose came down when they pulled back power, but they were still on the stall. Now, they were too low to the ground and the jet had lost most of its forward momentum. It came crashing down near the town of Chicklade. Eyewitnesses said that the plane was almost flat when it impacted the ground. None of the seven people on board made it out alive. The crash had devastated the BAC program. Mike Litgow had been testing the BAC-111 since its very first test flight. He had been on almost all other test flights, in some capacity or other. To say that he was one of the few people who knew the plane the best would not be an understatement. So whatever happened to this 111 was something that even he couldn't foresee. Going through the wreckage, they found the forward emergency door of the plane. Since this was a test flight, the crew had been provided with two emergency escape doors and parachutes should something go wrong. The doors were attached to the frame by means of 38 explosive bolts. The pilots had a switch on the center console, which would fire the bolts, allowing the crew to escape. The wreck showed that the bolts had indeed been fired by the crew prior to impact, but apparently there wasn't enough time for anyone to escape from the falling jet. The wreck told the investigators even more. It told them that the pilots were trying to pitch down during the final few moments of the flight. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough to save the plane. Now, since this was a brand new plane that was still undergoing testing, the investigators started looking through the wind tunnel tests that had been conducted by BAC to see if the plane had any latent faults that had gone undetected. They found that when the angle of incidence was about 19 degrees, the plane tended to pitch down and there was a sharp loss of lift. But that wasn't the case if the angle kept increasing. If the angle of incidence hit 25 degrees, then the nose would tend to pitch up. The problem with this was that when the plane hit high angles of incidence, it would tend to drop. That is, its downward velocity would spike. But that in turn increases the angle of incidence at which the air is hitting the wings, which can really mess with the lift generated by the airplane. Moreover, when they talked to pilots of the BAC-111, they said that they went right up to the highest incident values allowed for the flight and sometimes even exceeded them because they wanted to get the best data that they could for the engineers on the ground. So how did these higher angle of incidents affect the plane in general? They did more wind tunnel testing to see how the plane would react at such high angles. This is when they found something shocking. When the angle of incidents grew past a certain point, the effectiveness of the elevators on the tail of the plane fell. 
The elevators are what help the plane to pitch up and down, and pitch control is essential to get out of a stall. You see, when you're in a stall, you don't have a lot of air flowing over your wings. That means you barely have any lift. A great way to remedy the situation is by picking up some speed. And one of the best ways to do that is to pitch the nose down. You're essentially going to trade altitude for airspeed. That will get you out of the stall. The investigators found that you'd lose the ability to pitch down when you hit incident angles as high as 36 degrees. So how do you pitch down if your elevators barely have any control authority left at high angles of incidence? Well, that was the question that the investigators asked themselves as well. To understand why this happens, we have to look at the BAC 111 itself. It came down to its design. Now, I wouldn't say that the BAC 111 design is flawed. I mean, every design is a trade-off and every design has a weak spot. But the design is somewhat unique. The T-tail shape of the tail of the BAC 111 meant that it was susceptible to a phenomenon known as a deep stall. Since the elevators are so high up in a T-tail aircraft, at certain angles of incidence, the wings block airflow to the elevators and the tail, meaning that they're in the shadow of the wings. Thus, you have a situation where the pilots cannot get out of the stall because their elevators just don't work. But despite all of this, as they fell, Captain Lithgow fought with his plane and got the nose to drop a bit 50 seconds from impact, the nose was at 4 degrees, nose down. This is when they decided to command max power from the engines. But the application of power caused the nose to pitch all the way up to 17 degrees, undoing all of the progress that they had made, essentially sealing their fate. Then the investigators went even deeper. They wanted to know how such a flaw got past so many people. They looked at the wind tunnel data and compared it to the development of the VC-10. They found that during the development of the VC-10, the pilots were quite conservative. They went close to the limits, and when they did exceed it, they exceeded it by the smallest of margins. But in the case of the BAC-111, the pilots pushed past the limits that they had been given to get better data that would be of more use to the engineers on the ground. They also found that the pilots expected to have more time to react to the impending stall. But in the air, the stall overcame the airplane much quicker than any of the pilots expected. This is because the lift vector dropped off very quickly. So, what changed? It was now apparent that TTL airplanes had a flaw that could send them crashing. So the best solution was to make it so that it would be damn near impossible to get the plane into that position in the first place. They added stick shakers and stick pushers, which would alert the pilots to the impending stall when they still had time to respond, when the elevators would still work. Today, those features are standard on a lot of planes, and a lot of lives have been saved due to a stick shaker. Digging through the records, I can't find another incident where a BAC-111 stalled out. So the sacrifice of the seven people on board that day was not in vain. I guess that just goes to show you that behind every tiny safety feature is a story written in blood. If you want to watch another video about the BAC-111, might I suggest the story of Mohawk Airlines Flight 40. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.